Okay, we've gotten to the most complex of the types of slope problems that I've seen um, in the GED world. So this is about as tricky as it's going to get. Take a look at what it says here. It says, order the functions from smallest slope to largest. So we are clearly here being asked to compare slope. Okay. And that's not too hard of a thing to do. Why is my pen not working? We're being asked to compare slope, uh, and that's not usually too hard of a thing to do, except for here, I have my slope in three different forms. I have my line presented to me in three different forms. Here, I've been given the graph of a line, so I need to know how to find slope off of a graph. Here, I've been given the equation of a line, so I need to know how to find um, slope when given the equation of a line. Now here, what have I been given? Yes, it's a table of values, but notice what's on the table. Each one of these columns is labeled x and y. So what I'm saying is when x is 3, y is negative 4. When x is 5, y is 0. What I've been given here is a table of points. Each one of these lines represents a point, like this is the point 3, negative 4. This is the point 5, 0. This is the point seven four. so this is a table of points. So as we go about trying to um, compare our slopes, we're going to have to remember, and that's what makes this problem a little more confusing, how to find a slope from these different forms. So let's first go look at our line. Let's remember that when you're finding a slope with a line, it's really easy. You can just count the rise and put that over the run. Slope is just a relationship of how much your line goes up to how much your line goes over. So I'm going to start with any point on my graph, any point that I can easily read. This looks easily readable to me, as does this. And I'm going to ask myself, well, how much did I go up? Um, so that's my rise. So to go from this left point, and make sure you start with a left point. You actually don't have to, but it makes your life easier if you go from left to right when you read a graph. So I'm going to start from this left point here. And, oops, and I'm going to see how much I went up. Well, it's kind of hard to read on my graph. My graphs, though, numbering is really small. I'm sorry about that, guys. But this is the point 0, and um, we see negative 2, negative 4. This is 0, 2, 4. So this is the point 2 here. So I've gone up 2. And now, moving over, how far do I run? And we always try to run to the right. That's why I said um, start at the left point, and then you can always run to the right. Um, again, it's not necessary, but it makes your life easier to keep track of the signs. And so here I was, this is 0, negative 2, negative 4. I'm halfway between negative 2 and negative 4, so that must be at negative 3. So you can see that I'm moving over 1, 2, 3 spots. Again, I'm counting movement. It doesn't matter that I was on negative 3. It matters how much I moved. I moved 2 up and I moved 3 over. Don't mix it up with the point. And so... To get my slope, slope, we usually use the letter M to represent So My slope here is going to be my rise. My rise was 2 over my run. My run was 3. So the slope of this particular line is 2 thirds. Now notice that um, slope is written as a fraction. If this fraction could reduce, I should probably reduce it, but it can't, so I'm just going to move on. Now, let's take a look at function b. How do I find its slope when we have the equation of a line? Well, do remember that as long as the line is in what's known as slope-intercept form, you can just see the slope. And so you might remember that I taught you slope-intercept form is when y is alone. And a lot of students say to me, hey, Kate, there's not even a y in this equation. This isn't even a line. But what you might not know is this f of x. This is not f times x over here. See this f parentheses x, this says f of x. This is function notation. This is the formal name for y. In fact, anytime you see f of x, you can just replace it with y. That is just a formal way to talk about y, the value of the function when x is in it, f of x. 
Okay. And so um, I just replaced f of x with y, and now maybe it looks more like a line to you. And it's a line that's in slope-intercept form because it's in the form y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. As long as your y is alone or your f of x, you can see your m, your slope. And again, you don't have to memorize this. This is on your GED formula sheet. Okay. But what this tells us here is that whatever number is multiplying with x, in this case negative one half, is your slope. And that's not something that you have to figure out or do math to find. You just have to know that, that when the equation of your line is in this form where y is alone, then whatever number is with x is the slope. Okay. So I can see my two slopes here. Now how do I find my slope when I have a table of points? Well, you might remember that when I've been given points, the way to find slope is with the slope formula. So in this case, I would bust out my slope formula. Again, this is on the formula sheet. So y equals, oh, I'm sorry, it's not y, is it? Fired, Kate, hold on one second. You can tell it's the end of a long day. Let's try that again. Uh, again, I'm looking at my GED formula sheet. I'm not memorizing this. And the slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1, and this is the formula you will always use when you want to find slope and you've been given points uh, over x2 minus x1. So this is the second y uh, minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. So let's plug into this. We need a second y, and you probably say, well, which one's the second y? It actually really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent, but how, how about we call this the second point? So my second y would be 0. And from that, I'm going to minus, because the formula says minus, my first y. Now, be very careful. My first y is negative 4, so I'm going to minus negative 4. You're like, oh my gosh, you can't do that. You sure can. I'll deal with that in a second. Now, my second x, so I come down to the x column. Here's the second one is 5. And from that, because the formula says minus, I'm going to minus 3. Okay, now let's simplify this sucker. 0 minus negative 4, well... Um, when you minus a negative number, this is like the opposite of subtraction or the opposite of minusing. It just turns into positive. And then 0 plus 4 is 4. And 5 minus 3, of course, is 2. And you're almost done, except for this thing will simplify. 4 divides perfectly by 2, so the slope of this line is 2. Okay, great. Now that we know all three lines slope, 2 thirds, negative 1 half, and 2, we can order them in, from smallest to largest. Well, I know which one is the smallest because the smallest one is going to be the only one with a negative number here. Negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers. So my uh, smallest slope is function b. Function b with that negative one-half slope. Now, next one, two-thirds is what we call a proper fraction. See how its top is smaller than its bottom? Well, all proper fractions are less than 1. So clearly 2 thirds is going to be smaller than just plain old 2. And so the correct answer here is B, A, C. Again, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. I know this was a complex problem. If you found yourself overwhelmed by it, you should go back and watch the individual videos about finding slope off of graphs, finding slope when you have equations, and finding slope when you're given points. And then when you work on all three of those individually, it won't be so overwhelming when we get to a question like this.